Let's say that you'd like to use L systems to animate the growth of a plant over time. To do this, we need to, first of all, keyframe our generations. So at frame one, I'm going to keyframe a value of zero, hold down Alt and left mouse, set a keyframe. At frame 96, I'm then going to set a value of 15, again, Alt, left mouse. Hold down Shift and middle mouse this generation's text, and this will bring up the curves for the generations. If we highlight these two keyframes, and then we go up here to the straight line, that's going to cause a linear interpolation between those two keyframes. In other words, now our tree is going to grow at a constant value, and it's not going to try to slow down or speed up at any point. So now as I scroll up through here, we have something like this. But you'll notice that we have this bottle shape, and that doesn't look very good. So one thing that we can do to fix this is turning off this continuous width. By doing that, we're about halfway there in actually fixing that issue. On top of that, we can also go to this tube tab and keyframe the thickness. So back to frame one, let's set a keyframe here of zero. Frame 96, let's set this back to three. Again, all left mouse, hold down shift and middle mouse to bring this up in our curves, and then select this thickness text right here to show the keyframes for the thickness channel. Highlight the keys, spacebar F to frame. I'm going to highlight just the first key here and then set this to a shape that's kind of like this. Let's now take a look at these cherry blossoms. First of all, I'd like to randomize the scale. So over here in this point wrangle, we can do that by using P scale. So F at P scale, P scale is going to be a float, meaning that it has a decimal value, is equal to three. And let's start off with just a value of three and then set our visibility to this copy to points. Now we have something like that. In order to randomize this though, on a per point basis, we need to use the random function and then we need to give that random function some kind of seed or some kind of thing that's unique to every single point. In this case, I've set down this connectivity node and we have this point attribute called class, which is unique to every single point. So here I can use that. I could say at class is the seed for this random function, which will return a value between zero and one randomly for every single point. Let's multiply this by three and now we'll end up with something along these lines. Which looks pretty good, but unfortunately, some of these flower petals are getting really, really small, really close to zero, and that's a little bit too small. So in order to prevent that, we need to fit all this in between a value of one and three. So type in fit, parentheses, and I'd like to fit everything we have so far. So just take a parentheses and capture everything we have thus far. And the values we have thus far are happening between zero and three. And I wanna fit that in between one and three. And now that I've done this, we've taken care of some of those extra small petals. Let's now animate the size of these petals over time, starting at the center and going outwards. To do that, we'll need to multiply our P scale by something. So F at P scale, we're going to say multiply equals, which means take the current value and multiply this times a new attribute here called P scale mult. Now, right now we don't have any value in P scale mult. So everything is getting multiplied by zero, which is why everything just disappeared. But what I'd like to do now is assign this P scale mult attribute some sort of value that again is going to change over time and be controlled by this sphere right here. So with this sphere, I'm going to set this to a polygon, the frequency to three. I'm going to turn this into a VDB. So VDB from polygons. Let's change this to a fog VDB like so. And now I'm going to set our voxel size to something very coarse like 2.5. You really don't need much resolution for this, so it's okay to keep this at a small value. Let's use a attribute from volume. 
On the left inputs, we want these points to apply the attributes to, and we want this volume to use as our basis. Now, just to visualize what's about to happen here, with volumes, the closer you get to the center, the higher the value. So let's pretend in the middle here, we have a value of one. Towards the outer voxels here, we have a value that's much smaller, like let's say 0 0.01. And again, we're going to multiply this times the p-scale. So anything that's out here is going to basically have a scale of zero. Anything that's closer to the center of the sphere is going to have a value that we set in our point wrangle. Now that we have this, let's set our attribute name to p scale molts. And now, as I scale our sphere, we are left with this. If you'd like to know more about creating effects like this, be sure to check out my new course, L Systems and Instancing. You can find a link to that in this video's description. Thanks for watching.